If we think of everything we do online leaving a trace or a footprint, in the old days it would be like footprints on a beach where the tide would come in and erase them and they would be no more. Nowadays what you do is like footprints in wet cement, it's going to dry, it's going to be there for a long time visible to a lot of people. I think it's important for students to understand online where their boundaries are at as far as privacy, what they've allowed other people to see about them online, and then also just understanding what is out there as their digital footprint. We found that youth have a lot of confidence about their privacy. Um, they don't tend to be particularly concerned about um, things like um, businesses looking at their information. They're sort of into being the showy person to really get themselves out there to connect with their peers. The social part of these networks is really what's been so captivating to these students. One of the ways we can start a conversation about privacy and digital footprints with children is by reminding them that anything they do involves a series of choices. What's the message they want to convey? What's the best tool for doing it? What are the best techniques to use in creating that message? And who's your audience? And by simply slowing down, and thinking about these four questions, they're much more apt to be thoughtful about the information they're putting online and creating and establishing a very positive digital reputation that leaves only good footprints. They're also engaging in what we call reputation management activities. So they are um, deleting things that they've previously posted or that other people have posted about them. They've untagged themselves in photos that have been posted. They also manage who's in their friend network. It's quite important to think about who these friend networks are because even if you have a private profile, if you've friended a thousand people, that's a very public place. Many teens take steps to prune and, um, and otherwise block people who they've had in their network as another way of protecting their privacy. Too often conversations about privacy stop with a strong password that you don't share and with having something on your computer like virus protection. But that's really only protecting kids from things that are coming directly at them. It's not helping kids understand the implications of what they're doing as they go out into these digital spaces and participate in online communities. They need to know things about how search engines work, that search engines keep records of your searches and use them to direct ads back at you. They need to know how companies use the information that they enter and their path through different websites to target that website at them. Privacy is one of those places where if it becomes about reprimanding, no, you can't do this, no, you shouldn't be doing this, no, you know, you shouldn't be posting this, kids withdraw, especially at the middle school level. If you instead start to show them how they can use these tools and technologies more effectively, more creatively, and oh, by the way, safely and ethically, then you can engage them in the things that they love and care about. So for them, the acknowledgement has to be that it is something that they regularly have to do. It's a practice that they're going to do from today for the rest of their lives. We can't just stop at protecting kids from things coming at them. We have to make them really consciously aware and thoughtful of the implications of the things that they're doing themselves as they go out as participants and as creators of media.